Hi guys, Cliff here. My next build is the other kit that um, Minimum RC sent me, which was a surprise um, to you guys. Anyway, uh, when I built the Matchy, uh, the video of which is now up, um, they, they also sent me the other one, but I showed you two kits. Uh, that was in one of them, and the other one is this one here. Oh, uh, I've just opened it. Haven't really taken out much, so I'll turn you down and you can have a look through with me and see what I've got. <laughs> I'm really excited about this one. Okay, here we go. First off, I've downloaded the build instructions. As before, I printed four pages on one in black and white because I don't want to waste ink or paper particularly on something that I can read just as easily there. Um, I have had a little peep inside and just taken the motor out and tested it with um, the receiver. The receiver I took out of another aeroplane, well, it was spare actually. Uh, it is a minimum RC receiver, four channel receiver and minimum RC servos and tested it all. It's all working nicely. So I'll pop that to one side. And what I have is the minimum RC. I'll go straight to the model, the ASG 32 motor glider. And the, the beauty of this little airplane is got a pop up motor. When you open the throttle, it pops up and when you shut the throttle, it folds back down. So that's the model. I've got the usual beautifully printed uh, laser cut rather um, plywood parts. I've got the hardware pack with the hardware. I've got a little blue pack, knife, screwdriver, super glue and foam glue. I plan to use the Flysky transmitter um, they'd sent uh, with the Machi as well, which flies the Machi beautifully. Uh, I'll put a link below to the models and the transmitter, and you can take a look and order one up if you want. The weird thing is, I can't get it to bind with this old receiver I had from them. It must be a different protocol. Obviously, it binds easily to the Machi, no problems at all but it won't bind to this older receiver which i think possibly is dsm2 which i had bound to my spectrum before and it's working beautifully on the spectrum so uh, it must be a different protocol not that i know anything about protocols but all i know is it works with that um the fly sky transmitter works beautifully with the latest range of airplanes the first thing you have to build is the plywood Uh, these parts, the plywood, pop-up motor assembly, servo mount, receiver mount, and dihedral brace. It's all one assembly. Really clever, really nice little um, assembly. Right, so we need the servo base. You can virtually push them out, actually. Servo base. Uh, in fact, yeah. We've got those. Okay, let's just clean them up. Going to use a small file just to cake off the little nodule thingies. Uh, it says note the opening direction of the servo base. I'm going to build it as per the picture. Hang on, one of these bits has got a little hole in it. Put that the wrong way round. I think that extra little hole takes a screw which guides the cable out of the way. I'm not even going to attempt uh, to take that apart and glue it individually. I'm just going to flood it with super glue. Set that aside, as they say. And I think I'll put on. This bit next, okay. And there we have the first assembly. 
and the motor itself I put the prop on to test it test the direction of travel so pull that one off now and this has to sit in the cradle so that goes in there make sure they're all the way down now the motor is going to sit um, in there like that do the bottom half of the body a bit and that should be enough so the front of the motor is flush with the front of the pylon might be an idea just to run a little bit of um, epoxy resin around that I think I suppose the screw might pull the two bits together I think that is okay all right we'll call that assembled then let's make sure that screw is where it needs to be uh, screw in another m1 but a screw from the right hand side to form the motor line limit to prevent the motor line they mean the, the cable from interfering with the motor base movement or turning of the propeller or only needs to go in a small amount about there will do It kind of looks like the screws on that go in from the bottom, which I can't see working because the hole in the servo is obviously bigger than the hole in the plywood. Perhaps I ought to use the black one here, which is non-magnetic. Hey, hey, look at that. Does that not look the biz? Right, so that sits in there nicely now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the more cable ties, tidy the cable up, solder on the power lead, and I'll come back to you soon. Okay, I've assembled the unit. I've soldered on the motor wires. A couple of little connectors in there and put cable tie around, tidied them all up. I worked out which servo was going to be which because I needed to plug them into the right holes. Um, um, this is the rudder servo right at the end. Elevator servo is nearest the main spar. So I plugged them into their appropriate holes. So we've got elevator servo and rudder servo all working um, obviously the propeller isn't going to spin because it's not on but that's all to put it on Let's pop it on shall we there's a little um, B2 written on the back of the propeller that faces the motor that's a good tight fit on there um, yeah Let's see if it moves. <laughs> now, as you can see, it's not going all the way back because of that cable tie. So I'm going to make sure that that cable tie is positioned all the way up to the top there and the right way round. does work awfully well okay oh and I've also um, put five minute epoxy or actually it's 15 minute epoxy anyway around there just to make sure the motor stays on yeah so I've just got to make sure that that cable tie is in fact all the way back I might even put a little bit of take it off completely and put a little bit of um, epoxy on there just to hold the wires in place Okay, so that's the assembly. Next job, according to the instructions, is to in fact start cutting out the fuselage sides. There we are, look at that. 
All right, the cockpit of course hinges forward, I believe. So this goes, this goes in here. Actually, I think I've made a boo-boo there. I think that wire should have gone through. I think, yeah, I think the wire for the motor should have passed through the little hole where the server wires have gone because now they're sticking out um, and stopping me from putting the servo flush to the fuselage side. Ordinarily it wouldn't be a big deal because I could just unplug it and thread it back through but in this occasion it is a big deal because I've soldered it of course so what I think I'll do I'm just going to file a small nick in here just to take those wires yeah they'll do and what I think I'll do I think I might just put a little drop of CA on there just to hold them in the right place um, I said I was going to epoxy resin this wire here, but I didn't in the end. I CA'd them just onto there. So I'm going to put a little bit of CA just there just to hold that in. But for you guys, push the motor wire through this hole in the front where the servo wires come from. That screw has to be screwed in a little bit further as well because that's sticking out a little bit. Okay, let's do that again. So the bottom of these two formers have to be two millimetres away from the bottom of the fuselage because that's the thickness of the fuselage and it's going to glue onto those so it's going to be a lot easier to glue on the top and bottom decks by laying it on the um, work tech surface than it is trying to put it on because I can't put it down once this is glued on but I can glue them on, I can glue this in when the other side's done. So I'll leave that off for a minute. Uh, pieces that I need are Jim Lambert. Good evening, sir. Thank you for your comment. I'll read it later. I hope it's I do hope it's polite, Jim. Printed surface. You can either cut it off, it just extends over the front of the foam a little bit. You can either cut it off or curl it around. That's that one. Wings don't need. These pieces I do need. Let's just identify them. Yep, one, two, three, four, five. Last but by no means of the least, I need the tail plane. It's turning over that leading edge there. Just moves it up a bit. All right, um, you need to get a piece of carbon rod out because the carbon rod is what creases the control surfaces show you what we mean you need to on one side of the tail plane is a very fine cut that's better that just won't go in far enough there we go same with the uh, fin and rudder find that little line score line there it is I think I read somewhere it's about five mil movement so that it's probably going to be okay. These bottom pieces are just the right length to do their job. And if I move that too far, if I go right to the end, it might be too far. This one goes. And that one goes. Where does this go? Just. Oh, I see. I see, yeah. That bit there goes on the opening part where the battery goes. And that bit goes just behind it. So this has to go around the nose and 
all the way to the cockpit. So I think what I'm going to do is just to round this off a little bit just by creasing it. It does bend quite easily actually. But this create this little wasted area will go around the nose because the model has to obviously taper in at the nose. Obviously, nothing obvious about it at all, Cliff. And there's a small cut in this side, the fuse eye side, to bring it in. So that's got to go all the way up to there. I bet you're all interested to see exactly how I do this. Right, I'm just going to turn you off and I'll be back in. <laughs> no, right, then you can stay. But I'm thinking in my head as I do this, it might be easier to put some pins in. Now, I'd love to pin this down, but obviously I'm going to spoil the finish on the outside, so that's not going to happen. But I can put pins either side of it, stop it moving about. And I can also put pins in the slots where the control rods come out of. So I'll put those two in there to start. Look at that, two pins. It's almost there. Uh, so that goes there, that goes around there, that goes to there. I'm doing this because I need to position the fin. As you can see, it does end short. So that is designed to sit like that with the hinge line just off the back. So I think this is probably the most critical part. And I also need to pull that nose up. Whether I need to crease that at all, I don't know. Doesn't say anything about that. Pins and it's virtually there, look. So I'm going to deal with this little technique. Oh, I think I'm happy with that, guys, yeah. So say about a bit of 16th bolster just to bring that nose up. I'll let you know if it was the right amount. Uh, when this is stuck on. It does dry very quickly, or it gets tacky very quickly. And that says going to be stickers on it. It's not the end of the world if you get glue on the outside. It goes in there, down there, between those there, and down there. Does this bit where I've got my finger just starts to taper slightly so I guess ideally you want to pick that fuse eye side up slightly just put a piece of film in there a sec temporary one of our bits I think that bit of 16th balsa seems about perfect actually so that's what you can use too Okay, we'll let that settle a bit. Hope you didn't miss too much there. I uh, memory. I couldn't remember what my memory was set on. You're held up only by the drying glue, really. There's everything else is splendidly fast. And there's not a huge amount to them, to be honest, is there? About half an hour has passed. So, I think it must be time to glue in at the main control system thingy. I'm just wondering, you know, if the control horn should be in the center of that slot not at the bottom of it because that's going to inhibit the movement somewhat yeah silly 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 should have been mounted the other side of this um plywood mount the servos need to be mounted the other side of this piece of wood and then they, the hole it would line up perfectly so i'm moving it from that side of the plywood to that side of the plywood and that will line everything up perfectly 
Huh. That's why the servos. Oh well. I kind of realised it almost too late. So, I mean, that is very unusual, you've got to admit, to screw a servo in that way round. But easy swap. I was thinking, of course, I'd have to unthread it all, but they only slide in from the side, so no big deal. Okay, let's just offer that up, and all will now fit beautifully, I'm sure. And turn it over. Hey presto, the control horn is exactly in the centre of the slot. Tweezers. Hmm. Put that in there. Tuck it down onto the, looking at the slot, it's got to be tucked down pretty much onto the uh, bottom sheeting. Okay, now I'm going to glue this in and I'm just going to hold it till it sets. Alrighty. Cable runs. Now that looks nice. That is nice now. Got it sorted just in the nick of time. I'm going to keep this pressed in when it's dry. Come back to you. So the 200 millimeter conduit tube I've just gluing in place. It's got a natural curve to it, so I've curved it so as it's coming out and down the side of the fuselage. So it's just sticking out and the same with the at the tail end it's curving up naturally to where it needs to be. I haven't glued the one on the fin yet because the clamp that is because um, I just wanted to see where it's going to sit naturally. But it seems to be about right. I've just offered up the fuselage side. It looks like it's going to fit quite nicely. So I'm going to run a load of glue around and uh, go for it. Get it stuck on there. Then it'll just be a case of putting the stickers on. So what I've done on this fuselage side, right hand side, I've glued the piece of conduit on the inside as instructed. It sticks out both ends. I have to work fast with this glue though. It does go off. Uh, let's see. Oops, running. Turn it over. Put plenty around the nose because that's where the battery is. I want to obviously make a really good join there. It's just a case of getting it on. Can muck about in a minute. Because it does have a reasonably fast grab, so put that in my favour. Some weights from earlier. Okay, we'll let that set. We'll come back to it. Well, probably tomorrow. Cheers, guys. Well, seems to have come out quite nicely. Everything is in its place. The horns are sticking out in the right place. The conduits are sticking out in the right place. That white conduit at the back is pretty good actually. You hardly see it, do you? 
hardly see it. Okay, so that has to go just about. And they said put some glue on there around the hinge, which I haven't done. I mean, it's quite a decent cockpit, really, doesn't it? I'm going to put some glue not in the actual join because I don't want to glue it in. So I'm wiping it away from the join. Beautiful, beautiful, sir. So I've taken off the printed material, but a little trick you can use is just to, let me do this right here. This won't go in here, right, it's too tight. If you squeeze it down prior to gluing it, then you put it in and then it'll just expand up to fill the slot. So I'll do that if that isn't quite enough. And it's just about there. I'm just wondering if I ought to put the control horn on while, it, while it's on the bench. It's probably the next step. But it might just be a little bit easier to do while it's on the ground. Actually, I'm not going to be able to glue that in really until that bit's set. So I'm going to leave that to set. That's quite a healthy rudder horn given the size of the rudder. There we go. If I set it down like that, it can then set in a pretty good position. As keen as always, I'm going to prepare the wings. So I'm going to cut, oops, I'm going to cut them out. Ah, and there's also little tips to go on these wings, which is quite a big under camber on this. I'm not trying to go through all in one go to start. Force it into the aerofoil shape. And then pull the tape across to maintain it. Like that. So I've got the aerofoil shape bent in, the tape's holding it. Glue the tip on, and then when I do the bottom end, it's gonna be quite a nice, quite nice aerofoil. Nice and square, which is obviously quite important. Feels like it's drying. So, must be time to fit the magnets, I think. Okay, hopefully that's in a good position. I won't know until we've glued this one in and shut it down. Oh! That's a loud doorbell. Go away! It's daughter at the doorbell. So that goes in there. Isn't it amazing, isn't it? Something happens just as you're doing a really delicate part of the operation. See how useful these sockets are. That's better. It's pretty much in the center from the top. So 
hopefully that's going to be in the right place. It should have uh, dried by now, so let's have a look at this one first. Fingers crossed the magnet's in the right place. Ah, oh. yeah, nothing wrong with that. That was worth just measuring that, just to make sure that it was the same distance down from the top. That works well. Excellent. Hey guys, we're getting closer. Right, do you remember my little tip? Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And see if it will go in, in, in. Look at that. <laughs> so that will glue onto the main spar and then I'll run the carbon tube in. Except, oh, there's the phone. See you in a minute. Make you laugh. I just spotted having offered up the wing. Um, this is this is the starboard wing. Fair enough. This is the port wing. The opposite. You'll see that they're different at the root. Got different um, spacings on the fittings. Uh, so that's how you easily identify the leading edge of the wing, because. This one's obvious because it's got the number on it, but also the groove is smaller at the front and bigger at the back. And therefore that's how you know which way around to put the tip. And as you can see, this one's back to front. <laughs> so little boo-boo, which hopefully it's not too stuck. There we go. It's come off dead clean, good. So I'm going to stick that round the other way. Some groove at the front. Ah, well I just made another boo-boo. The big bit hands down. So I've just put all the spikes on the wrong side. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, if there's two models stuck in a tree, I'll know which one's mine. Looks pretty good. Right, well let that set off and go back to what we were about to do just now and that was the push rod. So I'll put that through that. Probably the outer hole because the server's got a reasonable amount of throw. So I'm going to go on the outer hole to start with and hope that that's about right. Push on a piece of Heat shrink tube, let's push it on. Uh, tweezers here, let's push it on the adjuster side first. Okay, that's that one on. It's a good overlap there, so let's see if it's warm enough here. Yeah. Oh, that feels warm. Gonna initially try heat. Rising off of it. Oh, it's slowly shrinking, I can see it. Just rubbing the tip of the iron very, very gently, very slightly on the heat shrink. Go along the top. I think that's in. Let's try it from this end. Yep. Seems to run pretty smooth. I've got a, a model Cessna actually, and it's got a chunk out the leading edge of the rudder, a fin, which is um, where I put the soldering iron through it. <laughs> That's better. All right, get that neutral. It looks pretty close. Okay. okay, I think that is going to be connected. It was pretty stiff. Test them in a minute. So let's turn it over, do the rudder. Well, 
die. Let's have a go, shall we? Let's pop a battery back in and elevator. Let's plug up. When I go, need to go down, I tend just to um, close the throttle, but you never know, you might need it. Anyway, that works very sweetly. Let's go for rudder. That's not bad either. Yes. So, right up. That works great. Now I'm just going to try that throttle. Here we go. Are you ready? Let's see. Here we go. <laughs> of course, it'll go down. It'll go down with the slipstream. Why it's not going down? Make the wires just slightly catching on the side, just inhibiting it slightly. Perfect. Time to stick the wings on. All right, excited moment. I've just put a little blob of super glue on each end of the um, heat shrink tube, just as a fail safe sort of backup. And now I'm going to mount a wing. Squeeze it down, squeeze them down, squeeze them down. There we go. Let's go against the So really solid fixing. What I think I'll do is just put a couple of little spikes in the foam between the alignment holes. This is a little extra. Up the main spot. Let's see how we get on. Just checking. That looks pretty good. Okay, I'm just going to have to hold this here, I think, until it starts to take effect. So while I hold it, you can go and uh, Make a cup of tea. Some things that, oh, I didn't spike that, did I? See him rushing. So a couple of little spikes just between the holes, just to let some glue into the foam. Okay. Pop that in there. And onto the main spar. Look at that. No time to admire it. Let's get it in gluey. So I'm just going to hold that a second onto the main spar. Right, the wing is set, but I'm just deciding exactly where I'm going to put this carbon fibre rod. It'd be a good idea if it sat down into this crease. Um, because it doesn't really line up with the main spar and I think I might just rough it up very, very slightly just to give it a little bit of a key nothing no big deal nothing much just draw it through sandpaper a couple of times just to give it a little bit of a surface there like that just 
just gonna rub the dust off there. Twirl it around with my fingers, I think. Just get a coating all over it. And uh, just give it a twist there, put a bit on the other side. Like that, just give it a smooth down. Quickly wipe the fingers and drop it in there. Guide it into position, just right up the end. And then I'll just smooth it on in. Like that. Maybe use a bit of saliva on it. Coat in, drop it in there. Okay, we'll let that set and we'll test for central gravity and any last minute details in a minute. Brilliant. Right, guys, she's finished. Um, I'm going to have to put a little bit of lead on the nose, but I just found this fantastic way of doing the centre of gravity. They were right there in front of my eyes. The CG on this one is on the first crease. How about that? Two perfect things. I just slide that under like that. In this case, I can actually support it off of the table. Look at that, virtually. So that's right in the crease. And that is actually off the table. Okay, so we've got motor. <coughs> motor. <coughs> it's a little bit stiff going back there, but I'm hoping with a bit of flight it'll drop, drop back. Okay, we've got elevator. We got rudder. So we're ready to go, guys. She's a pretty little model, I think you'll agree. Rather pleased with it. It's come together really quickly. And uh, well, looking forward to the uh, maiden flight now. ASG 32 for minimum RC. It's been a fun little build. I've always fancied a teal T tail glider, actually. I don't think I've ever had one. I've always fancied a model with a little pop-up motor as well. I'm really looking forward to flying this one. It should be great fun. Thanks for watching along. And um, if you haven't seen it, my matchy flying boat video, I'll link to that one at the end. Here he is. So two minimum RC aeroplanes. <laughs> really sweet. Uh, you, you've probably seen the maiden of this one. It was in a breezy day, but it, it you know held its own, flew really nicely. They don't recommend you take it off on water, but who knows? It might go. <laughs> I've got any anyway. And the beautiful little glider there. So that's the end of this video. The build. It's really quick, really fast. Uh, went together absolutely superbly. A uh, couple of little tricks there I uh, outlined along the way, which I found. And um, yeah, hit the like button down below, the old thumbs up button, be great. And I'll see you for the maiden flight. If you want to hit the uh, subscribe button as well, that'd be good. And I'll see you up the flying field where we'll give this little beauty a lob off. I'm just wondering, you know, if it'll um, slope soar. Don't see why not up on the hills to keep it entire close so when I fly this one 50 yards away you're not even going to see it still all good fun so again thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video cheers bye